All right, we are here at my outdoor worm bin and there's three things I wanted to talk about as we dig through this worm bin. And one is we put some grapes and blueberries in here and I wanna try and see how they're doing. We also did a, a mango skin and we wanna try and find that. And the last thing we wanna try and find is um, some sweet potatoes that didn't quite get fit, get digested from two feedings ago. And then finally, we are gonna start a cabbage experiment. I've got a frozen quarter of a cabbage and a raw quarter of a cabbage, and I wanna know which one goes faster. I think the frozen one is going to be based on the um, lettuce experiment we did, but I wanna see how much faster it goes. So those are the things we're gonna be looking at today. So let's just dig in. The feeding area was in the middle, and I feel it kind of wet and intact and sure enough some definite red wigglers all throughout can't really distinguish what this is some bedding but let's keep going and dig in here we did put a lot of bedding in the last couple feedings so we're going to find things like this toilet paper roll and inside there i see skin of maybe a watermelon i know we put some watermelon in here but you can just see the worms all over this. It's obviously very damp. It's absorbed the water and the worms are just, you know, just making it a home. And even inside they have, they have added some castings inside and you can see some of the worms are in there too. So that is, that's always amazing when you put those in, how there's nothing inside of them and then the worms kind of tunnel in and bring some stuff. and. We did put quite a bit of those in there, so we're gonna find more and more worms, and, and sure enough, look at that. They have definitely been busy going through the food and the bedding, all mixed in here, so this is, this is really good. I have a feeling, because I piled up the food in here, that it probably heated over a couple days, and so they didn't quite get to it, and now, now they're getting to it. This is the, it's been eight days since the last feeding but you can see a little bit of the coffee grounds and that's that's food for them too um and this this looks like a peel of something this could be the watermelon i'm not sure but just everywhere we go all kinds of different worms in different sizes you know very distinctive red wigglers with their orange tails there so and this actually this is grape seed or grape vine you know that the grapes are on so we'll see how long that takes usually that takes forever so let's keep digging in and seeing if we recognize anything as blueberries or grapes wow look at that look at that they are just swarming a little bitty worm ball here but i just love seeing the different sizes all mixed together this is great they are just all throughout here Pretty amazing. And going through this, this feeding zone here is good. It, it helps to break it up, separate it. You know, any food that they can't get to, they can certainly get to it now. I mean, you could just see all kinds of sizes and just really good, healthy looking worms. Good, good worm bin having all these different, um, you know, age levels of worm. And then right here you see wiggling a black soldier fly larvae. It's doing its thing too. I definitely see more of them in the spring, but just a just a great bin here. And I'll tell you the truth, I don't I don't really see anything recognizable. Other than I feel it feels a little mushy, you know. So there is definitely food like this. Right. Well, I thought it could be an apple core, but really I just keep finding bedding. I really don't know what what is in the middle of this, but whatever it is, they are they're going for it. Here's some. I think this was probably a little piece of celery that we put in. Yeah, when I look back at the video, I saw we put something in, but it's very fibrous, so they've eaten everything but the fibers so far. But let's keep going. We're still gonna look for our mango seed in that mango skin. Um, I may have already gotten to it. And it just wasn't firm enough for me to know here's those whoa this is a cherry seed from several videos ago it is still hard as a rock so it's probably not gonna 
do anything. We'll see. But on the sides, I'm feeling more kind of of the finished casting like material. And again, all kinds of all kinds of worms all throughout. Keep keep digging along. This is this is the pine cone again several feedings ago. Well, this thing's probably been in here maybe since the start, but it's been being consumed slowly but surely. You know, just great, great amount of worms in here. Here is a mango mango seed. It is not the mango seed we're looking for, but this looks like banana stem. So wow, yeah, it's just everywhere I dig. And it definitely feels drier on the outside, which makes sense. It's more area of the the um, contents of this bin are against a side of the, you know, bag here. So they're gonna be drier. But here is that mango seed. Oh, and inside is just a brown composty, I don't know, I can see mites in there. I don't know if you'll be able to see them, but the worms almost like they have vacated a little bit. There's a couple there, but there is black soldier fly larvae in here. Almost like they are enjoying this more. And this inner part of the seed is really mushy. Yeah, there's three black soldier fly larvae that are just going to town on this. So I'm gonna put it all back in and kind of keep it together, but that's the update of that. Again, we'll keep keep digging here. And I'm not finding any intact blueberries. I'm not finding any intact grapes. There's a peach seed that, again, <laughs> hard as a rock. It's fossilized, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I've, I've pretty much been through the whole bin and I'm not seeing any intact grapes or blueberries. They could be part of that mush, but I would say that the, the worms very interested in consuming them so this is good I'll we'll put these to the side and then we'll set up our feeding zone here and we are going to set it up and the only foods I'm going to be feeding and this is huh this is a mango seed that I don't ever remember maybe I put it in last time but this is a tiny mango seed so that's interesting but anyway, we're gonna set up our cabbage experiment here. So we'll put this down and it's like I said, it's gonna be the only food that we put in here besides coffee. And again, if you watched my um, cast worm casting storage and use and uh, video, you'll recognize this from harvesting and baiting some of the worms out of the castings. It's just a egg carton, but let's start with some bedding again never too much bedding especially this bin this bin was like almost all castings and I didn't want to just take it all out kind of treat this as a continuous flow but let's look at these two this is the frozen one and this is the raw one and the frozen one is kind of bulged out as it got frozen water expands when it uh, freezes so that makes sense because the cabbage is probably mostly water so it's probably also breaking or broke the cell walls on a cellular level, whereas this one is still intact. So we're gonna put them right here and I'm gonna find that hole. Here's the hole. <laughs> Here's the hole in the worm bin. So what we're actually gonna do is turn them like this. The hole from the critter is gonna be on the frozen um, cabbage. So when we come check on this seven days later, we'll know the hole is equal to the frozen cabbage and we'll know and i have not seen any critters just to give you a little update there no critters since i may duct tape this up just to uh prevent it or to know that nothing's coming in here they'd have to make their own hole, another hole again but we'll see on the next video if i do that too but that's pretty much gonna do it for the food portion besides of course some coffee and that way we know you know this is the two food things that they're gonna have to go for so it will be the frozen or the raw and it won't be like oh they like the frozen but they also like the other frozen food I put in there because it's not going to be in there so I'll put a little bit more bedding on it 
and then we'll cover it up and as usual with the outdoor worm bin I have some worms to do a time lapse so let's cover this cabbage up this should be really interesting and this will really let you know should you freeze your foods or let's say you didn't freeze foods and you're just gonna put raw stuff in there you know we'll be able to tell what our expectations should be based on raw versus frozen because when I put that frozen lettuce in there I thought it was gonna be a lot sturdier and last longer and it was in my vermi hut it uh, actually did not last at all and I'll uh, put a link to that video but that should about do it as far as the feeding I think I remembered everything but let's go ahead and do our time lapse not as many worms but we'll give it a shot so here we go All right, I just see one little guy right here, so we'll kind of cover him up, but that'll about do it for the time lapse. So I hope everybody's having a great day and happy vermicomposting, everybody. Take care now.